Hello and welcome to the Gorilla Guide webisode. Today's topic, a data protection and disaster recovery primer. On this event, you'll hear from experts at Rubrik, Pure Storage, and Phoenix Nap. Thank you so much for joining us on this event. We've got a fun event lined up for you. In case you aren't familiar with the Gorilla Guide book series, that's what the theme of this webinar is based around. We encourage you to visit gorilla.guide. You can find a link to that in your audience console for full length, completely free educational IT books. You can go there, you can download them all. They're great resources. You can read them on your mobile device. I encourage you to check those out. Now, before we get into today's topic, just a few things that you should know about the event. We've got some prizes. I'll be talking about those in a moment. Of course, just like the Gorilla Guide book series, we want this event to be educational. We encourage you to use the questions box. We'll be doing our best to answer every one of those questions, and we'll be doing a dedicated Q&A panel at the end of the event. So keep your questions coming in throughout the event. We also want this to be a social event. I'll talk about the hashtag for this event in just a moment over on Twitter. And then we have a number of resources available there in the handouts tab. I encourage you to check out. The prizes for today are three Amazon $100 gift cards. You must be live in attendance to qualify. I will be announcing the winner of these gift cards at a couple of different points during the webinar. All prize winners have the option to make a donation to a selected charity, and all prize winners must submit an IRS Form W-9 to Actual Tech Media. Full prize terms and conditions can be found in the handouts tab. Thanks to our partnership with the Gorilla Guide Book Club over at gorilla.guide. We have been making charitable donations to the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund and One Tree Planted. If you win a prize and you'd like to make a donation to a charity, we would love to help you do that. You can subscribe to all the Actual Tech Media social channels. Gorilla Guide is the hashtag. You can follow Actual Tech Media over on Twitter and me as well, David M. Davis. Subscribe to all the Actual Tech Media channels as well. They're in your audience console, YouTube, Facebook, and the 10 on Tech podcast. And we post all of our latest and greatest content over on LinkedIn. So follow Actual Tech Media there as well. Now, before I introduce you to today's first expert presenter, I want to talk just briefly for a moment about data protection in 2021 and beyond. According to a statistic by Phoenix Nap, 33% of companies without disaster recovery who suffer a major data disaster are out of business within one year. That's a huge number, 93%. In other words, if you don't have a DR plan and by chance you get hit with a disaster, it's very likely you're going to be out of business. And the odds, unfortunately, of getting hit with a disaster are relatively high, especially with ransomware attacks on the rise. Another statistic is that 96% of companies with a trusted backup and disaster recovery plan were able to survive a ransomware attack. I think those statistics are just really telling. If you don't have a DR plan, you're going to go out of business. If you do have a DR plan, you're going to stay in business, even if you're hit with a ransomware attack. And by the way, it's estimated that the cost of unplanned downtime is $17,000 per minute. Of course, that varies greatly based on the type of company that you have. But there's always the unknown cost, really, the reputation cost for the long term. I mean, if your customers can't access your company's website or do business with you for a day or a couple of days, odds are they're going to take their business elsewhere. And it might be hard to estimate the exact cost of that because you'll feel the impact for the long term. It's going to be hard to get those customers back. So yes, that is $25 million per day. And of course, like again, it varies based on the company. Needless to say, the cost is high. So the key factors, of course, are planning and preparing for disaster. And really, ultimately, it's all about the recovery and continued normal operations. Backing up is one thing, but recovery is even more important, in my opinion. The key metrics are RTO and RPO, recovery time objective. So the time it takes to get your company's applications back up and running. In other words, how long are you willing to be down for if there is a disaster? And then RPO, which is recovery point objective, which could also be said, how much data are you willing to lose? At what point are we going to recover back to? Some new considerations in 2021 and beyond, of course, are new DR solutions. There's new changes. There's new innovations which means thanks to automation, you can have a shorter RTO and improved RPO. 
You can swap physical sites for virtual ones, the cloud, upon failover to make DR easier and more affordable. And then many solutions offer full-blown disaster coverage, plus regular testing, plus audit support, and more. So there's a lot of full functionality out of the solutions that I'm seeing in the market today than ever before. And of course, always keep in mind the DR lifecycle. It's really kind of like the security wheel where it's not something that ever ends. You plan, you enact, you see if it works, you test. Hopefully you don't have a real disaster, but you test it. Then you analyze the results and odds are you're never going to get it perfect. And then you remediate that, you make changes, you retest, you replan, and then the cycle continues on again. So the DR life cycle really never ends. As long as you have a company, as long as you have applications and data, just like improving your security posture, you should always be planning, testing, and improving your disaster recovery stance as well. I hope you'll keep these things in mind as you listen to today's expert presentations. And with that, it's time to kick it off. All right, I'm excited now to bring in our first presenter. Welcome, Mr. William Bell, Executive Vice President of Products at Phoenix Snap. William, it's great to have you on the event. Take it away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Actual Tech Media Gorilla Guide webisode, a data protection and disaster recovery primer. My name is William Bell, Executive Vice President of Products, and today we're going to discuss the why, what, and how of disaster recovery and data protection. So a little bit about Phoenix Snap. For those of you that are not familiar with us, we were founded in 2009, and we started as a data center facility in Phoenix, Arizona, but quickly realized that we could help customers with so much more than that. Over the last 10 years, we've built an array of infrastructures as service products, and we've delivered those to locations around the globe, it's one of which is most certainly close to you. We've got 16 actual active data centers. 10 of those are network pops. We're delivering services in six major regions worldwide. Uh, and today, we're going to talk a lot about disaster recovery and how that plans and, and plays into our strategy around global delivery of infrastructure services. So why talk about any of this, right? I think it's important to understand that downtime can happen to anyone at any time. And when we're working with our partners and talking about what it means to businesses that suffer from a major outage, we found that 93% of those businesses are out of business within one year of a major disaster. Now, that is certainly skewed by small businesses, but it can suffer major ramifications for large companies as well. I think that a lot of small businesses think if I, you know, I don't have a lot to lose in a major outage, the reality of that couldn't be further from the truth. And truly, you know, this is happening to pretty much everyone. 50% of companies experience a downtime event longer than a full workday in the last five years. So if it hasn't happened in some capacity, some type of either in uh, mechanical, environmental, or technological outage, it can happen to you and likely will happen to you. And so it's important that you take time to discuss options internally for how you can address some of these challenges. I think that it's important to remember that if you have a great disaster recovery and data protection strategy, you can overcome some of these issues. And 96% of businesses that have implemented these capabilities are able to survive major, potentially company damaging issues and outages like ransomware and just general failure of IT services and ability to deliver. So why should you do this? You want to help prevent downtime for your business. Everybody works in a technological environment today. Even if you sell shoes, you probably sell shoes online, right? And it's important that you have a way to protect your businesses business from some type of disaster. From a technology perspective, anything can happen. You can get power outages. You can suffer technology failures, network switch, server People make mistakes and cause issues. Natural disasters happen and, and increasingly cyber attacks are starting to become a major category in the, uh, in the reasons that downtime happens. And so 
if you are looking to address some of those issues and you want to, you know, really try to improve your availability and protect your business, you can implement disaster recovery and data protection strategies to help you prevent ransomware, malware, accidental human error, deletion of data, you know, technological failures, hard drive, software, whatever it is, a small focused implementation of DR and and business continuity backups can protect you from these issues. So what does that look like? From a disaster recovery perspective, it provides you with a full replication of your primary environment. Typically, recovery point objectives and recovery time objectives are measured in minutes and seconds for a solution like this. And it really is for those businesses that require near 100% uptime. If you feel like even an hour or two hours is going to be damaging to your business in a material way, you really should look at, at actual orchestrated disaster recovery and failover capabilities. This, you know, today we can get most businesses to very near real time replication. And, you know, it's, it's empowering a lot of companies to, uh, you know, focus on their business and what they do and not on, you know, some type of major issue that might occur. On top of that, it's important from a data protection perspective that you have good, solid backups of your data and you're storing one of those backup copies offsite. This can help you with a disaster recovery, uh, you know, um, rescue, but it is going to be hours, possibly even days to get back up uh, and rolling. So, but if your business can tolerate that, a offsite backup is a great solution. But generally, you need backups for all kinds of things. So if you haven't taken a look at your data protection and backup strategies, I stress that either do that yourself or reach out to us and talk to us about, you know, getting an assessment of your environment, and we'll be happy to help you with that. So when you're looking at disaster recovery, you want to set clear DR objectives, exactly what it means to your business to be offline. You got to find the right technology whether it's an active replication or some type of offsite copy of a backup, you got to identify internally exactly who's responsible with implementing fixes associated uh, with some type of outage, and you have to test your implementation. If you don't test it, you have no assurance that it's actually going to be there when you need it. So that's that's the that's one of the biggest things that I I just can't stress it enough. You have to test your backup and DR strategy or it probably won't work when you need to use it. So how are we doing this with businesses today? We've partnered with the leader in data protection, multi-cloud availability, Veeam software, and we've built an array of solutions that customers can use to protect their critical environments. All kinds of different implementation approaches that, that really result in uh, very clear and concise data protection strategies for businesses. And we're implementing, you know, these capabilities for customers so that they can protect their business from one of the disasters that we talked about. And it's as simple as picking up the phone and calling us and talking about how we can protect your business starting right now. We're giving you lightning fast restores of your data a ton of different capabilities around the, the, the hypervisor you choose or cloud service you choose. And we're working together to drive these great solutions uh, with Veeam software. So you put those things together and you get pay as you go, uh, only for what you use, a support team there 24 seven to help you with your business implementation and uh, recovery. Very, very quick recovery for those that are choosing a more active replication implementation and availability across the globe so that you can choose the location that makes sense for protecting your business. You don't want to put something in the same city as you run your primary business, right? You want to find something at least, you know, 250, 500 miles away just to give you that geo redundancy in case of some type of major uh, issue. And we've seen stuff, mostly power related, that have affected large swaths of parts of the United States and Europe. So this is kind of the eye chart of all the things that we've got, but it's going to help me summarize. 
we've implemented Veeam solutions to protect the small and commercial businesses of the world. And we are building the, that technology into all of our products and services. Our world-class data security cloud that helps you get secure and compliant hosting of your infrastructure, you know, VMs ready to go, offsite data protection with Veeam Cloud Connect, you know, near real-time replication with our Veeam-based DR capabilities, and most recently, a managed Office 365 backup capability that's protecting your online data, email, SharePoint, Teams, et cetera, OneDrive, and bringing that out of the cloud and into a place that can be kept secure and encrypted and away from a major cloud outage, just in case you need to access it. So if any of this makes sense for you and your business, don't hesitate to reach out and get in touch. Our contact information is here. My contact information is on this as well. Um, I want to thank everyone for spending a few minutes with me on this Guerrilla Guide webisode. Uh, my name is William Bell, Executive Vice President of Products at Phoenix Nap, and I hope everyone has a safe and happy week. Thank you so much. Great presentation, William. Thank you so much for being on the event. Um, I look forward to having you back for our Q&A session that's coming up here in, in uh, about 20 minutes. So hang in there and we'll have you right back. I just brought up the poll question for everyone out there in the audience. The question on the screen says, what additional information would you like about the Phoenix NAP solution? And I'll leave that up there for a few moments, allow everyone to answer that. If you haven't done this before, you just answer right there in the slides window, select the option that corresponds to you. It's a multi-select, so feel free to select more than one. Um, if you don't see the poll question, you can push refresh on your web browser, and most of the time that will resolve any issue. I, I do want to bring up something that I forgot in the introduction. Uh, we are, for 2021, doing our best question prizes. So we are announcing a $50 Amazon gift cards for each of the sessions on the event today. Um, we will select the best question from each of the three sessions and contact those prize winners after the event. So if you have a question on your mind, uh, get it in early and uh, you'll be entered into the best question drawing uh, as long as, of course, you meet our prize policy, which is there in the handouts tab. So I see a lot of great questions coming in already from Matt, uh, Vincenta, Raghul, uh, Sachin, Bavash, um, David. Uh, thank you so much all the, for the, all the great questions. We do appreciate those. Uh, keep them coming. And with that, uh, if, you, if you haven't answered the poll, now's the time to respond because we are moving on to our next presenter. And now I'm excited to introduce you to Mr. Adam Eckerly, Director of Technical Marketing at Rubrik. Adam, great to have you on. Take it away. So as David mentioned, uh, I'm Director of Technical Marketing at Rubrik. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about Rubrik's approach to cloud data management. Um, I can find my next button here. So I'm going to just kind of go over the 10,000 foot view of rubric in case there's some folks out there that aren't quite familiar with us. And then I'm going to kind of key in on one piece of our portfolio and that's backup modernization and automation. So as I mentioned, uh, we're going to take a 10,000 foot view uh, of the rubric platform and how we've designed it with modernization and automation really at the core. Uh, there are several unique things about our platform, and the first is SLA automation or service uh, level agreement automation. Uh, if you've worked with managed service providers or cloud providers or colos, uh, you're familiar with uh, SLA policies. We take that concept and we bake it right into our core platform. Uh, we replace the thousands of backup jobs with just a few policies that can be applied across all of your workloads, uh, regardless of if they're running on premises or in the cloud. Another thing to note is that we back up not just the data, but also the metadata. So Rubrik understands the where, the when, and the how of your data. Uh, and that lets Rubrik get more out of your data, um, especially you know, as we talk about things like intelligence and automation, we can make decisions based on that metadata. Um, and it also allows us to do things without actually having to 
pull out data from the system, right? So we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, rubric is designed to recover quickly. Now, you know, it, a lot of folks in the, the space do backup really well. They're bringing lots of innovation to the table, um, but at the same time, backup is only part of the story, right? It's the recovery that can sometimes be uh, one of the more important parts. So, um, you know, one of the things I want to talk about is our built-in global search, and that makes it incredibly simple to find the data that you need to recover and then put it at your fingertips. Well, with just a couple of clicks, you can instantly recover and mount that data directly. Um, it's the recovery is instant and it's super intuitive to use. Rubric was also designed to be API first. With the Rubric API, you can deliver new and automated services across any topology, which was previously a pretty difficult feat to accomplish. And finally, Rubric is secure and has been designed to fit large and small organizations' security requirements. But what makes Rubric unique and most secure is that once backup data is written, it can never be changed. Uh, you might hear this referred to as immutability, um, and lots of people are, you know, it's, it's kind of becoming a buzzword in this, uh, uh, you know, ransomware-laden uh, era that we're living in. Uh, but when we say immutability, we mean it in terms of when we write data to the file system, it is permanent. It cannot be changed. So, uh, in other words, uh, we don't expose that data to an admin, to a user, to an application. Uh, data cannot be manipulated directly. Um, so that is a big piece of why we even go so far as to say, you know, we're immutable, but we're even immune to ransomware. Because uh, even though there's ransomware out there that can specifically attack backups, uh, they can't touch ours um, and, and yours uh, for those Rubrik customers out there. Uh, so that's kind of the, the high-level view. There's some other pieces that you can see on the slide, like extending the cloud. We certainly help customers um, not only protect on-premises data, but also um, protect data out in the cloud, uh, but also even um, we have some technology called, called Cloud On, where you can take a, a virtual machine, for instance, um, and maybe you just need to do some test dev uh, or test a restore, and you don't have... Uh, capacity or you don't want to take up capacity in your on-prem data center. So you can actually convert that VM on the fly to an Amazon EC2 instance, for example, or an Azure image um, and, you know, bring up that, that virtual machine uh, in one of the public cloud providers. Um, and then uh, there's also some products, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about ransomware, but there's a little bit more to that portfolio or that part of our portfolio uh, with Polaris Radar, um, which is more proactive uh, ransomware detection, and then also our player sonar product, which is about data governance. Um, I don't have time to get into those pieces of the portfolio today, but um, definitely encourage you to, you know, check out our website if you want more information on those areas. So let's kind of switch gears and turn to our focus on modernize and automate, which I, I think this is the good news in terms of having, you know, not a ton of time to talk about everything that I want to talk about, and that this is really the part of our portfolio that is the best place to start and is probably applicable to the largest set uh, of folks in this audience. So one of the reasons that we get a lot of interest in the market is that data protection hasn't really changed that much um, in, you know, recent past and even, you know, going pretty far back. Uh, it's been a complex architecture that's made up of different hardware and software components and often requires a lot of personnel to keep it up and running, right? You've probably heard, you know, more than me uh, talk about these aspects of legacy backup solutions. But we modernize all of this by collapsing this complex architecture down through a single software fabric that scales out infinitely to provide data protection both on-premises and in the cloud. We hear that uh, customers um, it's difficult for them to meet the recovery objectives uh, with their existing legacy solution. And that often requires multiple steps and possibly even multiple teams to fully recover. With Rubrik, you can quickly search across the entire environment 
and then easily pick the restore point that you want. You know, I talked about the global search uh, in the opening. Uh, this is, you know, kind of that Google-like capability where uh, maybe you don't know exactly what the file name is. The users come to you and, you know, perhaps they don't have the exact information you need. Well, that's why the metadata becomes so important. You can, uh, you know, search by different parameters to find the data that you need, and then it's super easy to restore. Um, and we can mount that data uh, directly from the rubric cluster, or, you know, we can choose where that data can, can be restored. So whether you're recovering from a corrupt database or a ransomware attack, recovery is really what rubric was built for. Legacy backup has also gotten costly. Hardware upgrades, maintenance, and personnel costs to maintain. Uh, so modern backup is just less expensive. Rubric customers recover 70 to 90% of their operational or administrative time when they move off of their legacy system. And then they save 40 to 50% in total hard costs. Now let me go into a little more depth uh, on the rubric way of managing data protection and really why it's uh, such a big time saver. With legacy systems, you have to take all of your business objectives and turn them into this technical reality. A backup administrator negotiates with each application owner perhaps, um, and maybe even down to the specific virtual machine level or application node that needs protecting. And then we gotta schedule all of those backups and in which order uh, there's blackout windows and exclusions, retention and archive policies. All of these things need to work in concert with each other in order for these backups to fully function. I like to use the analogy of shipping a package. When you ship a package uh, via one of the great services out there, right, you just basically hand over that package and you say, I want that package to be delivered in X number of days. Let's say I need to get it get it to its destination in three days. So uh, you don't have to then coordinate all of the steps that that package needs to take, the trucks, the planes, the locations, the timing. Uh, that's not what you expect out of a shipping company or a logistics company. And that's really what, you know, you shouldn't expect that uh, out of your data protection or, or cloud data management solution, right? You hand the package over and you let the logistics company do all of the hard work, all of the things uh, behind the scenes in order to get that package where it needs to go. Rubric, we're, we're pretty much doing the same thing. Uh, oh, the animation is not playing on the slide, but, but essentially uh, we're taking all of those steps and the platform is intelligent enough to figure out, uh, you know, if you want to back up that application every hour, keep those hours for a certain number uh, of days, um, and get into you know, all of your, your RPOs and your uh, recovery time objectives, we orchestrate all of that stuff for you. So all you really have to do is create a policy and say, here's how often I wanna back it up, here's how long I wanna retain it, do I wanna archive it to cloud, whatever, you put a few of those parameters into an SLA policy, and then we can assign that SLA policy to anything within the infrastructure, whether it's, uh, you know, we can have one SLA policy that protects both VMware virtual machines, Nutanix AHV machines, bare metal servers, uh, SQL servers, Oracle servers, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, so you don't have to have these sort of uh, point solutions or point jobs, uh, tactical jobs maybe is a better terminology, uh, to protect all of these different workloads. So another problem is that legacy systems can be slow when it comes to actually recovering data. You know, I keep kind of harping on that, that recovery is sort of what we're aiming to be really good at. And ultimately, that's why you have backups in the first place, because if the restore is no good or you're restoring bad data or the data has been modified by ransomware, you know, the restore is, uh, you know, becomes, um, you know, just another bad part of the system. And so uh, you don't have to worry about reassembling fulls and incrementals and, you know, keeping track of what's what um, as far as your data goes. Rubric takes uh, all of this and abstracts it away. Um, it's just a few clicks to uh, do any kind of uh, restore 
and I'll show you that in the demo. And coupling that with our global metadata index lets you look across the entire environment instead of having data silos um, and making it even more complex to do anything to restore the data that you need quickly. Uh, so basically, you just you can kind of just pick a date and a time or a point in time uh, and choose to restore. Uh, and there's a, a, a several different options to restore. Um, I see a question in the queue uh, asking about how fast is recovery. So we have an instant recovery option uh, where we actually mount the data directly on the rubric cluster. And in the case, uh, let's just use a, a vSphere example. Um, we can we go ahead and mount that data that virtual let's say it's a whole virtual machine we mount that virtual machine on an nfs uh, share right on the rubric cluster and then we automatically map that nfs share to an esxi host and go ahead and power it on so because i'm going to i'm going to do this exact thing i'm going to do a um, uh, um, a live mount where we by the time that i click live mount and go i'll flip tabs to to vsphere and by the time I flip tabs, like that VM is, is already up and running. Uh, so restores can be very fast. Um, so uh, to kind of close out on the slide so I can keep going, um, you know, data doesn't actually have to move around within the system. We've been able to map uh, those point in time, uh, what we call snapshots, but just, you know, th think of them as just backups uh, directly to hosts. So, you know, if we're using that live mount option, um, you know, it's super quick to get that virtual machine right up and running instantaneously. Uh, and also, when we're done with it, um, or let's say that we want that to become our new production VM, we can storage vMotion that VM right off to our production data store. Or if it was just, you know, we wanted to do some forensics, we can write in the rubric UI, you can just click unmount, and we take care of powering down, destroying the data. Uh, and unmounting that temporary NFS data store uh, from the ESXi host. So, um, and you'll kind of hear this again uh, when I talk about automation, but we want to do all of this work that was maybe manual processes uh, and just automate everything for you. So it's just super simple. If you talk to other Rubrik customers, if you ever do a customer reference, simplicity is probably the number one thing that you'll hear. So just a couple things. There's the handout over on the, the left-hand side of the screen, but just a couple more links. Uh, we've got the uh, data protection, uh, intelligent data protection white paper that talks about Cerebro, uh, which is that, that part of rubric that's kind of like that logistics company. That's the brain that's figuring out all the things it needs to do to meet those SLA policies. Um, and then we've also got the definitive guide to rubric cloud data management. Um, that's also a really good resource to get started. Uh, and with that, I will wrap and just thank everybody for your time today. I really appreciate it. And uh, over to you, David. All right. Thanks so much, Adam. Excellent presentation. Uh, we do appreciate that. I look forward to having you back here for the Q&A that's coming up after our next presentation. I've just brought up the poll question for everyone out there that says, what additional information would you like about the rubric solution? And I'll leave that up here for a moment, allow everyone uh, time to answer that poll. We got lots of great questions that have come in. Uh, we'll be queuing those up for the Q&A session. We'll be doing our best to get back to, to all of those in the Q&A, but there's a lot of questions here. So we appreciate that. Uh, if you have a question, obviously you, you like more information. So don't forget to you know check the poll there and I'll leave that up. I uh, give everyone a moment to respond. If you have any trouble answering the poll, just try a refresh on your web browser. And most of the time that will resolve it. Make sure you're using Chrome as well as the recommended web browser. Thank you everyone for the feedback on the presentation. I uh, love to hear that you find these helpful and educational. We do appreciate that. Make this a fun Friday uh, lunch educational session here on the Gorilla Guide webisode. All right, so thank you to everyone who responded to the poll. It's now time to move on to our next presentation. It's now, it's now my pleasure to introduce Mr. David Huskisson, Rapid Restore Solutions Manager at Pure Storage. David, always good to have you on. Take it away. Okay, uh, thank you, David. I'm delighted to be here. And for the next 10 minutes, I'm just gonna walk you through, just gonna give you a sense of the Pure Storage data protection ecosystem. But before we do that, I just 
want to just spend a few minutes just highlighting some trends that we've we've heard from customers, we've seen from industry analysts, because I think it ties together quite nicely the role that pure storage plays in the in the data protection universe. So I'm not going to go through every one of these just for time, but I'll just pick on a couple that really resonate uh, with me. So I guess the first one um, that really does resonate is, you know, in the, in the current sort of climate we're in, one of the things we're seeing is, you know, a massive acceleration in data transformation. I think it was, I think we all know it was happening already, but I think with the current environment, this, this move to digital is, is gaining more pace. And that creates some real issues for data protection because every time you're adding more front end storage, you've got to somehow protect that. And so that, that creates a lot of challenges. And I think if you look at, you know, if I, if I ask you to look sort of further down the screen, you know, if you look at data protection generally, it's been very focused on, on the sort of pursuit of backup. So there's been a lot of great developments from the data protection vendors on how to optimize backup. So I'm thinking of deduplication and synthetics and, and so forth. But the reality of it is, you know, recovery seems to be a bit of an afterthought. So it's all about getting the data off primary storage into some kind of data protection, uh, you know, kind of ecosystem. And, you know, if you think about some of the challenges that organizations are facing, so as I've said, you've got accelerated uh, digital transformation. So that means businesses relying a lot more on their IT infrastructure and their applications to take orders and to track deliveries and so on. But also, sadly, and I think you'll have all, you, I'm sure you're all living with this day to day, you know, suddenly, uh, you know, the, the increase in cyber crime is phenomenal. I think you can go, you can just go and look at any news website. There's been an attack here, an attack there. So you've got these sort of two opposing forces, really. You've got this increase in, in data, an increase in reliance on applications, and then you've also got a big target on your back, and it's all zeroing in on the data protection side, and especially kind of the ransomware cybercrime piece, because you know attackers know, um, you know they can compromise your primary data. They know that the place you will go to to not pay the ransom and to get your data back is your data protection ecosystem. And so what we're starting to see, and I've seen for the last sort of six to nine months, is attackers are really going after not only the primary data, but they're also going after your, uh, your backup system. So they're going in, they're deleting backups, they're encrypting backups. So you've got nowhere to go apart from pay the ransom, which nobody wants to do. So there's a, there's a lot going on um, in, the, in, the, in the data protection in the data protection universe. So let, let me segue here into how does Pure help? And if you don't know Pure Storage, you're probably sitting there thinking, well, you're a storage company, you're not a data protection company. You know, how can, how can Pure Storage help me, you know, overcome, manage some of these, you know, manage some of these trends that I've just, that I've just talked about. And so if you look at our product portfolio, we've got Flash Array, which was our first, which was our first entry into the market, the first enterprise designed from the ground up, all Flash Storage Array. Then we've got Flash Blade, which is our fast scale out, uh, highly performant, uh, unified fast file and object storage, and then more recently we've introduced another uh, another variant of Flash Array, Flash Array, Flash Array C, which is denser, uh, you know, better for longer term uh, storage, but really looks has all the features of a of an enterprise uh, Flash Array. And so, if you think about it, let me give you some context here. You know, you can easily map. Uh, your data protection ecosystem on top of the pure storage portfolio. So we can really deliver a modernization message across, across your, in, your data, in your data protection environment. So if you look at 
if you look at Flash Array, both Flash Array X and Flash Array C, they've both got open APIs for snapshot and replication control. And you know, we've exposed those APIs to our data protection partners, which I'll come on to in a, in a moment. If we think about Flash Blade, Flash Blade, as I said, is our all scale out Flash unified fast file and object store using, you know, using industry standard protocols like NFS, SMB and S3. And really what we've done there is we've really solved the recovery problem. And as I said earlier, the recovery problem is becoming more and more of a problem with everything geared towards backup. And because FlashBlade scale out architecture and its blade architecture, as you as you recover, your performance actually increases. So we can get multi terabyte per hour kind of recovery numbers, whether you're using a data protection product, whether you're using SQL scripts or using using uh, Oracle scripts. So we've really got the sort of the, the whole range covered here. But what the, the real key to our success is and one of the things I really want you to take away from this session is is really about our integration with our data protection partners because pure as I said is a you know an all flash enterprise hybrid storage company we don't have it we don't own a data protection product so what's been what's been incredibly important to us is the way that we've worked and integrated with our partners so so I talked about flash array snapshots, the ability to take a near instant copy of your mission critical applications. Well, we've exposed that API to all of these data protection partners you can see on this slide. We've exposed our replication APIs to these vendors. Because FlashBlade supports industry standard protocols, all of our data protection vendors work very well with FlashBlade as a repository. So it's not taken us, you know, a, a lot of work to be able to really be able to integrate very closely with our data protection partners. And finally, because this area, uh, has, you know, the, the area of data protection has become such an important place uh, for pure storage, we, we announced last September a tie-up with Cohesity. And you can see, hopefully you can see on the slide a little logo there that says Flash Recover. So Flash Recover is really the industry's first scale out all flash high performance story uh, uh, backup product built co-developed between Cohesity and Pure. So you get a disaggregated storage model for data protection, which is absolutely critical as your as your environment scale out. So the bottom line is, and the key takeaway really is, we can bring you best of breed flash storage with all the capabilities around ransomware protection, around scale out, around performance. And we've, we've very easily been able to integrate it with all the modern data protection vendors. So there's no interoperability issues. It pretty much works out of the box and it's a very risk free approach. You keep your data protection product of choice and all the capability you've built around it. And Pure Storage just modernizes the underlying backup storage to give you ransomware protection, give you highly scale out backup and restore performance. So for the time being, um, that's all I have. I wanted to keep it quite brief, but if you've got any more questions or you wanna see some more information, we have a wealth of information on purestorage.com. So we have we have a lot of we have individual pages devoted to each of our data protection partners. We have uh, some videos. We have information about our ransomware solutions. So please go and visit pure purestorage.com. Thank you very much for your attention. All right. Thank you, David. We do appreciate that. I've just brought up the poll question for everyone out there in our audience. What additional information would you like about the pure storage solution? And I'll leave that up here for a few moments. In fact, I think it's time now to announce our first Amazon $100 gift card. We've got an Amazon $100 gift card going to Chris Austin from Tennessee. Congratulations, Chris Austin from Tennessee. Uh, we've got two more Amazon $100 gift cards coming up after our Q&A session that will be starting here momentarily. I want to thank everyone out there with uh, for the excellent questions that have come in. Uh, keep those questions coming in. 
We will do a, be doing our best to answer those during the Q&A session. Uh, don't forget about our Amazon $50 gift card prize for the best question from each of the sessions. So if you have a question for a Phoenix Nav, for Rubrik, or for uh, Pure Storage, you know, feel free to uh, put the name of the company there in the question. That way we'll know exactly who it's for. All right. Thank you, everyone who responded to the poll question. And it's now time to move on to our Q&A panel. And now it's time to kick off today's expert Q&A panel. I'm excited to bring back in Mr. William Bell, Executive Vice President of Products at Phoenix Knapp, Mr. Adam Eckerly, Director of Technical Marketing at Rubrik, and Mr. David Huskisson, Rapid Restore Solutions Manager at Pure Storage. The first question is for you, William. They say, I operate a medium-sized business and I'm looking to set up a disaster recovery system. Can you tell me what I should look out for when developing a disaster recovery plan? So for medium-sized businesses, what we tend to look at is trying to understand what matters to your company. And a lot of people that are in charge of disaster recovery or in charge of data protection in general don't always understand what matters most to the business. So I think starting with a business assessment, a risk assessment to show what's important for your business and what an actual outage can mean to your business and, and its ability to continue to grow and thrive, that is the real cornerstone of developing a DR plan. From there, there's a ton of solutions available to be able to protect and replicate data as necessary. But it's usually the business understanding that tr trips up most people and needing to understand that sometimes having telephones available are the most important thing and everything else can wait. Sometimes it's email. Sometimes it's a critical application. So it, it does vary heavily, uh, but I recommend starting with that you know, kind of business assessment and risk assessment. Try to understand what it means for your business, and then we can work together and find a solution that fits. Wise advice. Thank you, William. Let's see. Next question is for you, Adam, at Rubrik. Uh, they're asking, really, in the world of data protection solutions, can you kind of tell us what you feel makes Rubrik unique or stand out? Yeah, I think it's our focus on the recovery and also our um, API-first architecture. You know, those are the two big pieces. I would also say that, you know, the the, the immutability piece, while, you know, like I said, you know, there, there's definitely vendors out there that uh, that claim that as well. Um, but I think we do it best in terms of, you know, when we say immutable, it really is immutable. Like, you, it, that data cannot be changed. And then, you know, just the power of the APIs and that you can integrate Rubrik into all the existing tools that you already have. You can, we have customers that build tools around Rubrik um, and just love that automation piece of it. Uh, so those are, those are the things that I would say are, are our main differentiators. Excellent. Thanks, Adam. Uh, David, this question's for you. They're asking, how do I get access to safe mode for ransomware? And also, what's the cost for that? Thank you, David. So very simply, safe mode is a core part of our, of our purity operating system. So if you want to go and deploy this, talk to your pure partner or your pure sales team from who you, who you purchased pure, and they will set you up. They will set you they will set you up with the, pr the process that you need to go through to deploy. And as for cost, there's no cost to the actual feature because it's just a core part of the purity operating system. There may be some incidental uh, additional costs around storage, depending on how long you want to retain your safe mode snapshots for. And we will do a sizing exercise in partnership to show you what that looks like. Very nice. And William, we've got another question for you at Phoenix Nap. Uh, they say that compliance is critical for their business, so they can't just store their backup and replica data anywhere. How do Veeam and Phoenix Snap address compliance concerns? Phoenix Snap and Veeam have worked together to implement secure and compliant data protection and disaster recovery solutions. We're doing HIPAA, SOC 2, PCI, all the major compliance standards that people have to follow today, we're working to address those and ensure that you can leverage our service powered by Veeam to protect that compliant 
and security focused data. And we're investing more every single day in bringing more compliance standards to the, to the list that we support. Uh, but you can reach out and talk to us about where we're at and hopefully we have what your business needs. Thanks, William. That compliance part is just so critical when it comes to data protection. Next question is for you, Adam, at Rubrik. They're asking, can Rubrik be used to help recover data in the public cloud, for example, using AWS? Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, um, we do that in a couple different ways. Um, I talked about cloud archival. We really call that cloud out. Uh, so basically, we're just shipping that data out to uh, one of the cloud providers. Uh, and then our cloud on is where we can actually, you know, convert those uh, applications on the fly to uh, one of the public cl cloud provider, you know, native instances. Um, we can also recover from the cloud archive as well. So, you know, let's say you're, um, you know, you're trying to do a more complex recovery uh, and you don't want to try to convert uh, a bunch of data on the fly, uh, like using cloud on. Um, you can have that cloud data out there uh, and just uh, do a restore directly from there. That's probably the most efficient thing to do, um, you know, recover directly from the cloud archive. So there's a, a few different options, um, but the, you know, the most succinct answer is yes, absolutely. We can help you recover from the cloud. Excellent. Thanks, Adam. Next question is for you, David, at Pure. They're asking, how does FlashBlade deliver the rapid restore performance that you talked about in your presentation? Yeah, I mean, again, very, very sort of briefly, kind of, there's, there's two pieces to it, really. The first piece is it's an all flash architecture. So there's no there's no spinning disk. There's no physical movement. So that certainly speeds recovery up. And then the, the other fundamental here is the actual blade architecture on, on what it's built. And for every every additional uh, storage that you add, you add storage, you add networking and compute. And what you actually find, in fact, as you as you expand your flash blade, your performance increases. So a fully populated flash blade with all the horsepower of the networking and the additional CPU will perform much better than a uh, than a lower capacity flash blade. Thanks, David, for explaining how that performance works there with FlashBlade. Next question, back to you, William, at Phoenix Nap. Does Phoenix Nap offer support for testing and failover events? And if so, can you tell us what that covers exactly? Yeah, so Phoenix Nap does offer the ability to test and perform test failovers of your data. So if you're replicating us and you're using a DR as a service um, SKU in our, in our system, we actually give you one test failover per year and allow you to run for seven days in our cloud service with your uh, data and make sure that everything works as you expect it to work. So it doesn't cost you anything else. It's included with all of our subscriptions um, and it's very helpful for businesses to, to understand that ahead of time so that they feel protected and they feel like they're going to have an actual successful DR failover if that day comes. Thanks, William. Yeah, that testing part is just so critical. I think companies don't do that enough is what uh, statistics have told us. Next question back to you, Adam, at Rubric. Uh, they're asking here, you know, you talked about backup and DR, but what else does Rubric do? Yeah, so uh, I mentioned kind of in uh, on that 10,000 foot view, we've got a few different areas of our portfolio. Uh, the Rubric cloud data management is certainly the core, uh, but above and beyond that, we've got uh, our Polaris platform, which is a SaaS-based application. Uh, within Polaris, we offer uh, various cloud native protections, things like OneDrive, uh, for example, uh, and other Microsoft, 65, Microsoft 365 pieces. Uh, and then uh, also we have Polaris Radar, which is our proactive ransomware protection. So, you know, think the, the core platform that if you were a customer and all you were doing is buying the core, the core rubric CDM product, you get, you know, ransomware immunability, uh, for example, like, you know, you, you can recover from ra ransomware, no problem. But if you want to be proactive about it and you want to understand maybe the blast radius of a ransomware attack, uh, our Polaris radar product will help sort of take that ransomware protection to the next level. And then we have the data governance piece, which is Polaris sonar. So if you want to do things like uh, HIPAA compliance or, 
um, you know, scan your backup data for personally identifiable information or PII, um, or you want to do, you know, make sure you're complying with GDPR, uh, Polaris Sonar is something that you'll want to look at uh, to do that. So that's, those are the highlights of our portfolio today. Thanks, Adam, for telling us more about the Rubric portfolio and how it can help companies. Next question, back to you, David, at Pure Storage. They're asking if you can provide some more details on exactly what Flash Recover is and how it works. Yeah, sure. So as I said in the presentation, we, we have uh, partnered with Cohesity. We've had the Cohesity Data Protect software for some time, but that was based on a uh, you know, spinning disk um, and by bringing FlashBlade, so FlashBlade is a core component to Flash Recover. So you get you can acquire the software and the hardware through Pure. And basically, what Flash Recover gives you is a an immensely scale out disaggregated disaggregated data protection product. So really, no matter how big your primary storage gets you can just add additional storage and or compute nodes to scale out to scale out your data protection environment which means upgrading is simple management continues to be simple whether you've got a small deployment or a really large one and you you're able to drive some real deduplication efficiencies because you're just deduplicating backup data across uh, your your data your flash recover uh, deployment Thanks, David, for clarifying that. Next question now, back to you, William, at Phoenix Nap. They're asking, can I test Veeam backups and replication with my system? Do you offer any sort of free trial? Phoenix Nap and Veeam have partnered together to give all of our prospects and people looking at the solutions the ability to do a free trial and proof of concept. So we, I can't stress this enough. We recommend that one of the first things you do is set up an account with us and start to try to you know, bring your backups offsite or live replicate your data to the cloud service, do a test failover, pull data back from, the, uh, from a cloud repo. All those implementation concepts, run through them, make sure they work for your business. And then if everything's successful, we can work together. Thanks, William. That sounds like a great opportunity to try out Veeam in a free trial situation, uh, see how it works and how it can help uh, companies out there of all sizes with their DR challenges. And now back to you, Adam, at Rubrik. What should people do to get started with Rubrik? If what they've learned about today really resonates with them, what should they do to get started? Yeah, I think, um, so we've actually just gone through and, and uh, you know, revamped uh, a lot of our website. We're continuing to do that, but rubrik.com is the best place to start. Uh, we also have a great uh, presence on YouTube uh, if you want to look at some whiteboard videos and things like that. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in the automation side of things, definitely look at build.rubric.com. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. You all at Rubric do a great job of providing uh, so many different resources, especially around automation and development. So thank you for sharing those. Final question back to you, David, at Pure Storage. They're asking, what advantages do snapshots for backup deliver? So, the, so snapshots, you know, uh, storage snapshots have been around a while and simply... You know, if you've got mission critical applications that you can't afford to either turn off or you can't afford to have a performance drop while you're doing a backup, that's what snapshots will do. You orchestrate, you, you send an instruction via your data protection product to our flash array, to purity. We will quiesce the application, take the snapshot and present that to a some kind of backup server. And the beauty of it is you should see no drop in performance from the application. And what you also get is a, a very quick point in time uh, copy of your mission critical application, which means restoration is almost instant. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Excellent. Thank you so much, David. And thank you to all of today's expert presenters, uh, William Bell of Phoenix Nap, Adam Eckerly of Rubric, and Mr. David Huskisson from Pure Storage. And with that, it's time to wrap up today's webisode. I already announced our first $100 grand prize winner. That was Chris Austin for an Amazon gift card. Uh, the next two Amazon $100 gift card winners are Ryan Fan from California and Sam Ruff from Indiana. Congratulations to all three prize winners. 
and we will be contacting the three Amazon $50 gift card winners after today's event via email. So look out for email, of course, from Actual Tech Media. I hope that you learned a lot on today's event. Uh, I really enjoyed this topic, especially on uh, a data protection and disaster recovery primer. I hope that you enjoyed it as well and learned a lot. Uh, we'll be forwarding all the questions we didn't have time to answer back to today's expert presenters. Thank you everyone for your support. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Bye-bye.